Hi folks, starting to join. Welcome, good morning. Hello. I'm just going to um, share the link around on all our social media, make sure people can log on. So I'm gonna go do that right now. Okay, let's get that link. It's good to be together again today. Just a reminder that you can pull up the chat bar and start chatting with each other. Maybe you already have, I haven't looked yet. I'm just trying to find the post with our worship info to send to people. And here is the link and the phone info. I'm going to just post that to our page. Okay, got that posted. <clears throat> ah. Good morning. Someone is asking to get upgraded. I'm not sure what that means. Um, can you say more? Um, also, for all of you, if you want to speak to everyone in the chat, then you can um, change the selection from all panelists to all, um, to everyone. Ah, that was Jeremy trying to message me. It has um, a family member's name there, Jeremy. Sorry about that. Oops. Nope. I accidentally promoted <laughs> Connie. <laughs> Facebook, kerfuffles. Connie, I'm sorry, I'm gonna demote you from panelists. That was an accident. Ah, <laughs> uh, what a time. All right. There's Jeremy. Hello. You are muted, which is probably what you intend. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Roger and Kathy. Good morning, Malarski family and Johnson family. It's good to see you all digitally there. All right, we've got about eight minutes before we'll get started. Um, I see that Carol and Allen are here. Uh, the, uh, the Connors from Jefferson City, welcome. Welcome to any friends joining us from the Jefferson City Fellowship. We're so glad to see you all. Um, the Ordways, the Bacas all the way from Mexico. Hi, how exciting. Um, who else is here? Larry, Lisa from Jefferson City as well, welcome. Mary Ellen, I think is all the way from somewhere back east. Welcome, welcome. The Bow Sellers, Maya, Tim, welcome everybody. So um, we are on, oh, I have so many things that are all going to fall down around me. We are on webinar setting, which means that um, you won't be able to see each other. You'll just be able to see the worship leaders. Um, but we are going to try a coffee hour after this time together. So um, toward the end of our service, we're going to post a link uh, for you to go into a different Zoom meeting room where you'll all be able to see each other and chat and have coffee hour. Um, so we'll try that out and see how it goes. Um, but for today, you can chat with each other in the chat as some of you are already doing. Um, Johnson's, we've got snow too. Yes, Nettleton's, it's snowing over here as well. Um, 
I, I don't know. I'm torn between whether to think it's pretty or whether to think it's kind of insult to injury <laughs> when we're all stuck at home. Um, but I think my children are going out to play in it. So uh, maybe it's all to the good. Uh, would love to hear um, anybody else who's dialing in from afar uh, in the chat where you're coming from. Uh, we've got uh, Bacas from Mexico. We've got some Jeff City folks. Would also love to hear uh, what um, hot beverage you're enjoying this morning, um, how you're doing. Coffee, absolutely. I just finished some Raspberry Royale tea. It's a fave. All right, got about six minutes before we begin. Fretboard coffee obtained via delivery. Safe and easy, good to know. Yeah, um, I've been seeing a lot of local businesses trying to shift and find ways to get us their goods in safe ways. And I hope that we can um, help support them in these times because I know it's a really um, tough time to be a small business owner or any kind of, it's a tough time to be any anyone. <laughs> Here's Jamila logging in from her RE time. Hello. Oh, we Jamila. had a nice RE time together. Good. How was it? What did you all do together? We read this and we tied on our strings. We talked about the ways we'll be together during the week and then what we're excited about doing. And I talked to them about making their special place in their house if they haven't yet. So. Excellent. And did and we you talked a little bit about our principles and which ones are in play right now. Great. How many kids did you have log on? Yeah, let me see. There was about seven families. Excellent. Um, yeah, it was fun. Love it. The, the McPherson's, the April's family, um, the Ikes, um, uh, Nancy Cheek Samora's family, a few others. So. Excellent. It was nice. Cool. Well, we're all just kind of uh, saying hello in the chat for a few more minutes before we get started. And um, in just one minute, I'm going to go ahead and try and push us live on Facebook. So um, I'm going to be working on that. Hello, Fritchies. Uh, Barbara Carter was hanging out for RE and enjoyed that. Who's, oh, good. We have Todd. Um, great. I'm going to send us live. Dottie and Rosie are logging in. Good morning. Kim Wade is logging in from Michigan. Hi, Kim. Hope you're staying safe up there. Erica and Kindle. Hi. All right. Live on Facebook. What is happening? Let's see about this. Okay. All right, everybody pray for bandwidth. <laughs> Last week, I um, did this Zoom call and uh, sent it live on Facebook for an hour for our service. And afterward, my internet service provider said no more and they slowed our bandwidth way down. And my children were trying to watch cartoons and they were all pixelated because we'd used up too much bandwidth. So. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, the internet gods let us go live as we intend this morning. Um, and if not, I have a uh, not ideal backup plan. So we'll see how we do. Try and close all of our extraneous windows. Oh no. Okay.
Well, what I'm going to do while I'm working on getting the live going is go ahead and put a prelude on for you. Uh, good morning, Hiles family, Ellen, Laura, Mel, the Bergmans, the Scots, Amy. Good morning, everybody. We've got 54 folks on, or 54 computers, so um, that's a number of families. Welcome, welcome. So glad to see everybody. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here in just a second, and actually, um, the way that we're going to start is by hearing some music from Hans. And this week, he um, went ahead and recorded uh, music as videos so that we could watch him play. So I'm going to put that on for you. Um, sound optimize. Let's get this gone. Here we go. Here's Hans. Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you to Hans for that recording. Welcome to our Facebook Live, folks. Um, we were not able to get the streaming straight from Zoom working, so we're doing what we can. I'm Facebook Living from my phone while Zooming from my computer. And um, uh, some parts of the service might not look super great to you Facebook Live folks, so we'll hope to get that all ironed out for next week. Um, but to all of you, welcome. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbia, Missouri, which is a congregation that is not contained by walls and that is coming at you from uh, homes across Columbia and uh, that is representing a gathering of people from all over the place, really. We've got folks uh, here in Columbia, we've got folks down in Ashland, we've got folks down in Jefferson City from our sister fellowship down there. Welcome, a special welcome to our Jefferson City Fellowship friends. Uh, we've got people coming to us from uh, Tulsa, some of my family uh, logging on and Jeremy's down there as well. Uh, we have the Bacas joining us from Mexico, from near Guadalajara. We've got some folks joining us uh, from the East Coast. So just welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone. It is so good to be together. Um, as a colleague of mine has been saying, um, we are staying apart and staying connected. So um, it is good to be connected and together with you in this time. A couple of uh, orientation bits from uh, me to you about Zooming. Um, so you are watching what is called a Zoom webinar. So that means that um, we, you're obviously not seeing each other's faces on the video, um, but you're gonna get a chance to, as we finish up our worship time together, we'll post a link for you to join us in coffee hours. You can all see each other. And there's a function where we can send you into breakout rooms so that you can um, chat in smaller groups with one another and catch up there. Um, the way that you can interact and that we hope you will interact during the service is by bringing up the chat bar. Um, so if you're on your computer, there's a bar of options on the bottom of your screen. And if you're on an app, um, it's often around the top. There's a button that says chat. And when you chat, uh, unless you just want to talk to um, your worship leaders here, then um, we need you to change from all panelists to everyone. So if you want everyone to see your message, go ahead and change that setting. If you have a tech question or something that you want to ask to just um, those of us who are leading the service, feel free to change it to just all panelists. And Todd is our digital worship associate this morning. He's gonna try and help. Um, and um, we also have some other folks standing by to try and help as they are able and as needed. So um, welcome to all of you and to our time together this morning. I'm going to begin with opening words by the Reverend Florence Kaplow. On this strange Sunday, we gather together in new ways, linked to each other through the delicate tracery of electrons, and through the invisible bonds of care and love that always tie us together. We share with millions across the world the wondering and fear and uncertainty of this time. And we share a wish. May all of us stay well and whole. May each of us find a grounding of strength and clarity. May each of us let our hearts break open to new ways for caring for our neighbors. May each of us know, even if we are alone, that we are held in a great embrace of love, bound to one another across every distance. May it be so. And we're gonna start together by singing. I have been having a ton of fun playing with an app called Gridplay that lets you sing with yourself. I highly recommend it <laughs> in these odd times. And so what I did was I recorded a version of our hymn, uh, Meditation on Breathing, and I recorded all the different parts layered on top of each other. So what I wanna invite you to do from home is to choose the part that you want to keep singing along with, 
and just sing along at home. It's gonna be about two minutes. It's gonna repeat again and again. And so this is really meant to be a chant that we sink into. I invite you to really sink into the chant from your home. And I'm going to share it with you now. Make sure I've got the right one. Oh my goodness, okay, it's gonna share both of them, not what I want, okay. Let's give it a shot, everybody. Breathe in, breathe out. When I breathe in, breathe in I breathe in, breathe out. When I breathe, breathe out. In, I breathe out, out when I breathe, breathe in. in. I breathe, breathe in, out when I breathe, breathe out. In. I breathe, breathe out, out when I breathe, breathe in. in. I breathe in, I breathe in, in out when I breathe out. out. When I breathe in, when I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, when I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, when I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out. We'll keep playing with the various technologies available to us in these times. And um, Jamila will now lead us in our weekly affirmation. Or not, I will. Let our voices join together across the distance in the affirmation that we share together each week. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. And I now invite you to light your chalice if you have one at home, or a candle, and to join with Jeremy in singing our Rise Up O Flame song. Here's my chalice. And we'd love to hear from you in the chat um, what you're lighting in your home, um, whether it's a candle or a chalice or just a symbolic lighting. And let's sing together with Jeremy from home. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so if you have your gray hymnals, this is number 362. Uh, this is Rise Up, O Flame. We'll do it three times through. All right, one, ready, go. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, show to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, Show to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, 
eyes are cool flame by thy light glowing show to us beauty vision and joy oh i love seeing all of the things you're lighting i saw you know, the bathroom candle, let's just be honest about that. I saw somebody is, um, we've got some people lighting their um, iPhone flashlights, that counts. Um, we've got people um, lighting various um, scented candles that they have around the house. Um, people uh, using family heirloom. Oh, Rosie and Dottie have a wedding chalice that they made. Um, oh, and there's somebody using a UU app to light a chalice there. So, um, <laughs> and somebody set up their, set off their fire alarm with the candles. So please be careful uh, at home with your chalices. Let's keep those chalices uh, safe. We don't want any damage from our um, centering and grounding time together today. Um, so now we're going to move on to our weekly centering moment, and Jamila will lead us there. Good morning. In our children's RE time, we read a book called The Invisible String that talked all about how we are connected to everyone that we love with an invisible string that is our love. And even when we're far apart, we still feel that connection, no matter how far we are. And so for our centering today, I want you to really imagine that string that is connecting your heart to another heart in this congregation. And you can go click on the participants tab to see all the people who are here with you today. And you can click on attendees to see it and just scroll through and just pick someone out, someone who you would like to send love along that invisible string to today. And just imagine that connection, it, your love traveling all along that connection from however far apart you are. And send to them your care, the hugs that you can't give them in person. The shoulder to cry on if they're feeling sad. The laugh to give them in those moments of joy we share together. To send it all along that, that string. <laughs> And as we hold that connection, we are so blessed to live in this time when we can make that real <laughs> through all the ways we are connected with technology. And so I encourage you as this day goes on to reach out in one of those ways to someone you would like to share that bit of love with. I just saw that my, um, my second grade teacher just friended me on Facebook. <laughs> that she's feeling that connection that we have all through all the years and all the distance. And so reach out, reach out to someone because it could make all the difference today and every day. Thank you, Jamila, for connecting us to our connections with each other through that grounding moment. Um, I'm seeing in the chat that folks can't actually see the attendees, that only the um, hosts can, so sorry about that. But um, perhaps uh, just spend some time thinking about anyone from our UUCC community today and, um, and send them your love in spirit and in reality. And you can <laughs> scroll through the comments to get a sense of some of the people who are here. Absolutely. So what we'd like to do next is um, our ritual of joys and sorrows. At uh, church, we use stones and water. 
Um, here it, from home, I invite you to engage this however it feels meaningful to you. You might spend some time looking at the flame. Um, you might uh, put a hand over your heart. Um, you might uh, continue to envision the faces of loved ones and friends. And what we're going to do is put on another piece from Hans and then ask for you to share your joys and sorrows and prayers in the chat. And then uh, keep an eye on the chat so we can hold one another's joys and sorrows and prayers together. Uh, so your dropping of a stone is your comment into the chat, into the great waters of the internet. And um, we will share there. Um, you can go ahead and begin now sharing the joys and sorrows that you'd like our community to hold together. And I will be putting on some more music from Hans.
Thank you to Hans for the beautiful music. Thank you to all of you for sharing so many of the joys and sorrows on your hearts in this time. There is so much to um, hold in our hearts right now. They're just full to bursting with fear and love and even those moments of joy. And I just know that it is together as a community that we can hold the huge breadth of all of that. And um, when we gather in person, we often sing uh, a song that is our prayer, um, the, recognizing as Unitarian Universalists that part of uh, what, how we pray is by what we do in this world. And so um, Jeremy is gonna lead us um, the words are singing, singing with you, singing with you is my prayer. And then we'll substitute in um, other uh, action verbs in for singing and you'll be able to just follow along from home. So let's join from home in singing our prayer together to hold all of these things that are um, on our hearts. All right, welcome again friends. All right, here we go. Ready and sing. Singing, singing with you, singing with you is my prayer. Quarantining, quarantining, quarantining with you, quarantining with you is my prayer. Zooming, Zooming, zooming with you, zooming with you is my prayer. Loving, loving, loving with you, loving with you is my prayer. Singing, singing, singing with you, singing with you is my prayer. Amen. So I'm going to share a brief reflection with you. On the one hand, it is spring now, and the ancient rhythms and cycles of nature are pulsing around us. The trees are still budding. The grasses and hardy weeds are still sprouting, and the bulbs are still sending shoots up through the rain-soaked earth. On the one hand, our lives and loved ones are right here as they have been. We still need to drink water and feed ourselves nourishing foods. We still are connecting with each other and reaching out with love. We still work and play and rest in turn. On the other hand, each day, sometimes each hour, brings the dizzying sensation that we have suddenly stumbled into an entirely new world, that nothing is as it was before. Perhaps we are looking around, blinking and disoriented, trying to get our bearings, trying to understand which way is up. In the last 10 days, we have lost our routines. We have lost our sense of certainty about the world around us. We have lost the self-protective denial about our mortality. We have lost childcare. We have lost jobs or incomes or retirement savings. We have lost the physical presence of dear ones. We have lost peace of mind. We have lost so much. Let us take a moment to sit together in the grief of what we have lost. If you'd like to share words of lament in the chat, you're invited to do so now. Yeah. 
such hard things, such hard things to hold. All that we're missing, all of our fear and worry, We grieve together what we have lost and we stumble forward into the world that is ours now. We stumble forward into the world as it is because there is no other choice, because it is still spring and we are still miraculously living and loving, still so entirely human and connected and whole. And so here we are in this world that is the same and totally, totally new. And we are the same and also totally new. And we are getting to know the world even as it is remaking itself daily. And we are getting to know ourselves even as we are having to reorient ourselves daily. In uncertain times and unfamiliar landscapes, it is easy to feel adrift. And the sensation of free fall or untethered float is not so comfortable for the human body or mind. So we're going to spend a moment today figuring out how to build new anchors into our lives in a world where some of our old anchors have been yanked away from us. In these times, we are going to learn again and again, as many times as we need, how to create tethers to the life we love and the values that matter most to us, even as everything is swirling around us, because we cannot float away into despair. So what I would love for you to do is to share in the chat a few things you found that anchor you. And I'm gonna say a few things as well. First, turn off the news or limit it extremely. Don't go down the rabbit hole of scary articles. If you are practicing social distancing, if you are taking care of your hand health and hygiene, if you are limiting your interactions, you are doing all that you can do, and you don't need to know too much more than that. Another one, go outside every day, even if it is just for a moment in the shock of freezing rain, go outside every day and move your body every day, even if it's just gentle stretching on your bed. I'm seeing so many other ideas, reading with children, pulling weeds, time with kids, playing music, painting, exercising, planting a garden, binging HGTV, doing what we need to do to root and anchor ourselves into the world as it is swirling around us. And for me, the biggest anchor of all is spiritual practice. In these times more than any perhaps ever, we need to set a time, set aside time and space for centering and recentering and recentering. And so what I wanted to suggest to you today is to create something of a liturgy for your day with touch points. The word liturgy means work of the people. And in church life, it's the structure by which people connect with the holy. It's the structure of a worship service. It's the structure of a day for monastics. And so I'd like to suggest a few touch points for a liturgy of the day. And I'd like to invite you maybe to get a pen and paper and to Think about how you can um, create a bit of a, 
a touchstone schedule for your days. And so here are three suggestions that we have come up with for you uh, to adapt as you will. The first is to begin the day with connection and internal assessment. So last week, we talked together about creating a sacred space inside your home that you could return to when you needed to feel connected to uh, your church community here or when you need to feel connected to um, what is precious and sacred in life. And I'd like to invite each of you to consider what it would be to start your day each day um, by returning to that sacred space. Uh, perhaps that's where you take your first cup of coffee in the morning. Perhaps you take your kids there and spend a minute talking together about the day ahead of you. And what I'd love to suggest is that you connect with the items in that space. Um, last week, we created that space together by bringing in an item that reminds you of the strength of your ancestors, uh, an item from the earth to remind you of the grounding of the earth and of its beauty and an item that was precious to you to help you connect with how you want to be in this time. And Jamila is showing us some of the items on her sacred space, her altar that she's created at home. And so what we'd like to suggest to you is every morning go to that space and hold the thing that reminds you of the resilience of your ancestors and touch the thing from the earth that reminds you of your grounding and ponder the precious item that connects you with how you want to be in this time. And spend a moment noticing what you need in your day. You may be able to meet your needs or get them met by someone in your household. You may be able to find a creative way to meet something that's close to what you need, or you may have needs that simply will not be met right now. But naming your need is its own power. Indeed, that's often what is the central act of prayer, to speak your need into the world. And if there's someone in your life who can help meet that need, speak it to them. And here's a hint, your church community might be that someone who can help. So think about speaking it to us as well. So that's our first touch point in the day our first suggestion for an anchor to start your day. And then we'd like to suggest that halfway through your day, sometime midday, you spend a moment recentering, perhaps using breath practices. Uh, we've talked a lot about four, seven, eight breathing in our church, where you breathe into the count of four, hold your breath for seven and then out for the count of eight. It's an act that is known to kind of soothe the nervous system and the body. Um, and Jamila also has a, um, a breath prayer that she's gonna share that works for all ages. Um, so we'll try that one out together right now. Hello, so this is adapted uh, from a book by Sister Susan, who is a student of Thich Nhat Hanh and it's based on his teaching. I'll begin. Dear little one, let us sit very quietly. Listen. Listen to the wind. Listen to the birds. Listen to the crickets and the frogs. And listen very quietly to your own breathing. Let us put our hand on our tummy and feel our breathing. Our tummy goes out and then it goes in. Breathing in and breathing out. Our tummy goes out and then it goes in. Breathing in and breathing out. I close my eyes and stay with my breathing in. I close my eyes and stay with my breathing out. It is so wonderful to feel my breath going in. 
It is so wonderful to feel my breath going out. Breathing in, I calm my whole body. Breathing out, my whole body is calm. Body, calm. Breathing in, I am blooming like a flower. Breathing out, I feel fresh. Flower, fresh. Breathing in, I see myself as a mountain. Breathing out, I feel solid. Mountain, solid. Breathing in, I see myself as space. Breathing out, I feel free. Space, free. Breathing in, I come back to myself. Breathing out, I smile. Breathing in, the world is so beautiful. Breathing out, I smile. The blade of grass is so green. The sky is so blue. We listen and we see that all life is breathing with us. So I think we can practice breathing and trying to feel that connection with all else that's breathing. <laughs> and just to try to notice all the sensations that are in us as we breathe. Thank you, Jamila. The third touchstone that we would like to suggest for your day is a practice of ending the day. And one of the things that I've been noticing, um, I've had my children home uh, for about 10 days now. And my spouse and I have both been working our jobs with our children home for 10 days now. And um, one of the things that I've noticed is that I am just like powering through. I am getting through the day, shoving away the feelings, shove, shove, shove can't feel that right now. Or maybe it's not because you're busy. Maybe it's because those feelings are not a place where we can live all day long and we need to shove them away. Um, but for whatever reason, um, we need sometimes to deny <laughs> and sometimes we need to just let those things wash over us. And so the third practice that we'd like to invite you to think of as a touchstone in your day um, is an evening practice. For me, it's going to be after my kids go to bed when I feel like I can be unedited. And that's a practice of connecting with your feelings and connecting with your body and your emotional experience through your body. Um, and there are lots of ways you can go about this. Perhaps you know the tried and true way for you. Um, for me, I am remembering a, a time in my life that I went through that was emotionally difficult. And I would go through my days and then at night I would get in the bathtub and something about being submerged in water would just release all of the sobbing <laughs> that I had not been doing at the other times of the day. And so I'm just suggesting as a curiosity if maybe there's an element, a natural element that helps you connect with your feelings. So maybe earth is your element and you need to dig your hands or toes in the dirt in order to really connect with the feelings and experience of your body. Maybe fire is your element and you just need to stare um, at a candle or at a fire in the fireplace and that helps you um, actually come into your body and, and feel and experience the emotional tenor of the day. Maybe it's air and you want to sit outside with your eyes closed and feel whatever breeze there is come across your face. 
maybe it's water like it seems to be for me and you want to bathe or shower or soak your feet or spend some time intentionally washing your hands to really bring yourself back into your body and the experience of all of the emotions that are that are coming to you. Um, we can't actually set those feelings down unless we let ourselves feel them. Um, and we need to set aside some time every day to access all of that, to just let it wash over you, or else it becomes locked up in really painful ways in the body. Um, so I wanna invite you as your third touchstone of the day, perhaps in the evening, to just spend some time, maybe you use an element or another practice to let the sensations and emotions wash over you to notice them, feel them, and, and then perhaps um, once you've done that to, to bring yourself back together again um, by helping your, bring your cognitive brain back online. Um, so one practice that I've found really helpful to kind of bring the lots of feelings part of my brain and that I can think about this part of my brain back together again is to do some journaling after I've had some time to let things just wash over me, to, to write about them helps bring um, the rest of my mind back in so that I can um, kind of integrate myself for the evening. Um, somebody was also saying uh, recently related to journaling that we are uh, primary sources during this time. We are living history and um, we can consider ourselves to be historical documentarians, if that is a helpful way to frame um, just really processing some of, the, um, some of the things that we're experiencing. So those are our suggestions for you. And right now I would like to um, play one more song from Hans and invite you to just spend some time thinking about what the liturgy of your day might look like. Perhaps really write down uh, on a paper, what are three touchstones that you can build into your day every single day to help you kind of keep centered time, uh, return to yourself, return to your resources three times every day. So that's our uh, homework for you now as we listen to another piece of music from Hans. Thank you. 
So I want to tell you about someone who you may, whose name you may have heard before, Julian of Norwich. Julian of Norwich was a 14th century Christian mystic and monastic. And as I was thinking about this service, about anchoring ourselves, I realized a fun fact, which is that the role that she played in her abbey was called anchoress. Um, and what that means um, is that she essentially never left her cell. She was anchoring the abbey by sheltering in place. And so she was really kind of the patron saint of social distancing. And um, Julian of Norwich lived during the time of the bubonic plague in England, um, surviving two major outbreaks of the plague in her lifetime. Um, she had vivid experiences of God and she wrote what is known to be the earliest surviving book in English written by a woman. Um, it was called Revelations of Divine Love. And the most well-known words of Julian of Norwich you may have heard before, all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. And it's said that these words came to Julian when she ex suffered a, an extremely severe illness that left her bed bedridden for a time and that yielded a near-death experience. And during that experience, um, she believed that she saw Jesus who said these words to her, that um, God did not promise we would not be tempest-tossed, but promised that God's love would be with us even then. And then these words were revealed. She said, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. So years ago, my Unitarian Universalist colleague, the Reverend Meg Barnhouse, wrote a song in which she imagined a conversation with Julian of Norwich about that famous phrase. And this week, she recorded a version of that song along with permission for any UU church to live stream it um, as her words and the legacy of Julian speak to us in this moment. We don't know whether all will be well, but we know that we can make things better for each other. And we believe as Unitarian Universalists that no one is outside of the love that holds us. So I'm gonna play the song now. And um, as I do, I invite you to remember that um, whether all will be well or not, um, that we can make things better for each other. And I'm going to invite your offering for the work of our congregation as we hear this song together. The link to donate online will be posted in the chat, or you can always send a check by mail to the church um, over the course of your week. Our address will also be in the chat. And my computer is deciding to give me trouble on sharing the screen. Here we go. Julian. 
Sin, do you not know? Do you not know about loneliness and Julia? Do you not know? Do you not know about disease? And I said, Julian, do you not know? Do you not know about cruelty? I said, Julian, it's too much. It's brought me to my knees. And she said, all will be well. All will be well. All manner of things will be well. She said, no one does not know, does not know about sorrow. May you no know one does not know, does not know about pain. She said, no one does not know, does not know about hunger. And no one does not know, does not know about shame. She said, all will be well, all will be well. No one does not know, does not know about loneliness, and no one does not know, does not know about disease. She said, No one does not know, does not know about cruelty. She said, I know it's too much. It brought me to my knees, where I heard, All will be well, all will be well, all. Do you not know, do you not know about tenderness? She said, baby girl, do you not know, do you not know about friends? She said, baby girl, do you not know, do you not know about the spirit? She said, baby girl, do you not know, it's only love that never ends, it's only love that never ends, and so all will be well, all will be well. I will share the link to this song um, throughout all of our digital means so that it can be a touchstone for you, perhaps, uh, in your week. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> that was exciting. Okay. Everybody needs an exciting worship blooper moment uh, in these times. So thank you for joining me in mine. Um, now sustained by the power of good songwriting, I invite you to join me in the spirit of prayer with these words from Linda Susan Ulrich. Spirit of hope, help me. I can't seem to find my way back to your realm. I've been wandering in labyrinths, running into dead ends, facing down monsters, losing my way. Ariadne's thread only tangles my feet and leaves my fingers raw. Spirit of hope, ground me. I've lost my bearings on what's real. Who I am, how I got here, why it matters. Unreality makes a poor compass. I remember to look up lest I get caught off guard, but such preparations mean little to a soul suffering vertigo. Spirit of hope, steady me. Maybe the only way forward is to stay still. Perhaps if I rest my bones exactly where I am, instead of scrabbling for purchase, searching for loopholes, willing myself on, perhaps the dust will settle enough for a path to reappear. A path that needn't be tended or beautiful, just barely discernible. 
spirit of hope, guide me. You dwell in the turnaround between inhale and exhale, a moment of trust that pulls me into the future. I've been looking for something more grand, more obvious, more compelling, more compelling. Help me recognize the promise and the flickering signs of life, of love, of hope. Help me remember that my body already knows the way home. Amen. I'm gonna invite you to join us in one more time of singing together. This song is a, uh, a statement of faith by UU theologian, Rebecca Parker. The words go, there is a love holding me. There is a love holding all that I love. There is a love holding all. I rest in this love. And then it's repeated with the plural, there is a love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love holding all, we rest in this love. And I used my app to make it around because that's how the song was meant to be sung and because I know you all love to laugh at my love of rounds. So um, I invite you to sing along. Uh, you can join in with any of the parts on the round and I will share it now and invite you to sing from home. There is a love holding me. There is a love holding all that I love. There is a love holding all. I rest in this love. There is a love holding us. There Our closing words are, my, are by my beloved colleague, Wayne Arneson. Take courage, friends. The road is often hard. The stakes are very high and the way is never clear. But take courage, for deep down there is another truth. You are not alone. Even now, from your own homes and social distancing, you are not alone. We are with you. We are thinking of you and holding you in love. 
After we sing our benediction, we'd like to invite folks to join us at the link I'm about to post in the chat for video coffee hour. It may be chaos, but we're going to give it a try so we can see each other. Um, we'll be able to send you into breakout rooms of four or five to talk to one another. So now, as I get that link for you, I invite you to put your hand over your heart or take the hands of those whom you are with in your home and join Jeremy in singing our benediction. All right, welcome one more time, everybody. We will start with our benediction. Ready? And now on leaving one another, may we give up hand and heart. Let us share our benediction lovingly before we part. Amen. Go in peace, y'all. We love you. Join us at coffee hour. Lots of loves. I'm going to post the link one more time. I'll just keep posting it. Facebook Livers, give me a minute and I'll post our coffee hour link in the comments of the Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>